Hi dear fans, friends and subscribers. Uh, this is your host Ram uh, welcoming you uh, on another Cricket Happening show. Uh, and on this Cricket Happening show, uh, what I am going to look at, as yesterday I previewed the Kingsmead Durban, uh, the final one day national, which is now, right now underway. And as I said, it's going to be a spicy pitch. Well, the first use of the spicy pitch was given to the New Zealand bowlers as South Africans were the ones who actually won the toss and they decided to bat first on a pitch that they know well and well they, uh, they, they finished at 283 for 7 of their 50 overs. The good thing about the South African innings was that uh, yesterday I was telling you Monet Van Wyk has to fire uh, and that happened. So that definitely uh, was a very very good sign as the openers Mone Van Wyk and Hashim Amla really um, lent into the New Zealand bowling. Uh, when Ben Beeler was taken for runs, Adam Min was the one who bowled with the semblance of respectability. Bracewell also had some runs taken off him, but it was good to see that Mone Van Wyk was stroking the ball well with some very good pull shots of any short stuff that he received, and he was also good through the offside. Hashim Amla, as usual, uh, leaning into the strokes with aplomb, and Mone Van Wyk and Hashim Amla were, were really, really doing pretty well, and in doing so, what they did best was to run, in, run an opening partnership <coughs> of 89 runs for the first wicket, with New Zealand really, really hunting for their first breakthrough. We saw the pitch was really pacey, it was good caddy for the bowlers, but I thought the South African batsmen played well when this partnership went on to add 89 runs for the first wicket. And then finally the breakthrough came when Hashim Amla, after playing a strokeful 44 of 55 deliveries, succumbed as Grant Elliott uh, bowled a delivery, which was very well bowled by Grant Elliott, I thought. And uh, he actually forced Hashim Amla to spoon the delivery onto him. And Hashim Amla was gone, caught and bowled Elliott for 44 of 55 deliveries, 7-4. So that was wicket number one. But the opening partnership was something that South Africa will be happy about because we know that the opening partnership has not been a delivering for South Africa of late. And finally that came in the form of Mone Van Wyk and Hashim Amla adding 89 runs. So that was the first wicket. So Hashim Amla gone, caught and bowled Elliott for 44 to 55 balls. In came in really Rozo, but really Rozo couldn't do much here today as Ben Wheeler, uh, I thought he bowled a very nice delivery. The ball actually left him. He forced really Rozo to poke at it. He did, and Latham in the slips came up with the catch. So he was gone. Really Rozo was gone for six of nine balls. It made the score 96 for two. Uh, and then we saw Mone Van Wyk was uh, continuing to play his strokes. He also hit some sixes uh, of the balling of the spinners. He saw the uh, and uh, Isodi was going to sit for sex. Uh, and then finally, uh, the third wicket fell when Mone Van Wyk, after doing a good contribution, getting his first 50 in the series, as he was out for 58 of 100 balls with four fours and two sixes. Elliot was the man who took his wicket. So that made it 134 for three. In walked A.B. De Villiers now, was along with David Miller. And A.B. De Villiers, uh, well, definitely did what was expected as he started uh, stroking the ball forcefully uh, through the, uh, both the offside and onside and he was going well. David Miller uh, was really playing uh, as a very, very silent companion and uh, the score uh, uh, really uh, had some, there was a momentum in A.B.D. Williams and Miller with the crease as the score moved uh, in the 10 overs because when Van White fell, it was in the 31st over and in the 41st over De Villiers fell, but by the time uh, I thought um, it was a uh, pretty uh, qu uh, quick work uh, for um, for the South Africans. That there was definitely a lot of momentum uh, brought into the brought into the side as uh, 80 odd runs were added by De Villiers and Miller in 10 overs, which gave uh, the 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 innings some real momentum. And then finally De Villiers succumbed when he was bowled by Brace for 64, 48 deliveries, eight fours and one six. Uh, Miller was joined in by Bahadin, and Bahadin struck a quick fire 40 of uh, just 28 deliveries, 6 fours and 1 6, scorching the, uh, scorching the um, ground, I would say. The strokes really uh, going with some, uh, at some serious pace, 
and then finally David Miller was out after contributing 36 as he was caught behind by Ronke of the Manning of Adam Min for 36 of 37 deliveries with three fours. A beheading was the one who contributed in good measure to take the South African score to 283 for 7 of 50 overs. His contribution being a very quick fire 40 of just 28 deliveries with six fours and one six. Uh, David Weiss was out for the fellow 15 balls. Abbott was not around three. 283 for seven was what uh, South Africa ended up with. And it was a good score under the circumstances, one thought. And uh, the bowling, if you look at it, Ben Wheeler uh, definitely went for runs. Uh, but today uh, it was the, uh, the, the New Zealand captain, Kane Williamson, uh, handing over the new ball to Ben Wheeler. Uh, he would definitely learn from experience, even though he leads from runs. Uh, I thought he still bowled in the good areas. Uh, he, could have, he could have still bowled much better, but you can understand that Ben Wheeler uh, is only, uh, I mean, he's just uh, playing, I mean, he's just come into New Zealand cricket, and I thought his uh, figures don't really reflect that. 10 overs, no maiden, 371. Adam Ben, uh, as I said, bowled his semblance of respectability. 10 overs, 1 maiden, 44 runs and 1 wicket. Doug Bracewell, 10 overs, 1 maiden, 1 for 54. Uh, Sodhi was uh, really cracked for some runs. 8 overs cost him 55. Grant Elliott, 10 overs. I thought he was the best of the ballers there. 10 overs, no maiden, 241. Colin Munro bowled 2 overs for 11 down. So 283. Uh, again, one can't say that 283 is enough on this pitch. One does not know. As I'm talking to you, uh, New Zealand are um, doing decently, as I said, right now. I do see that the New Zealand innings, right now, uh, they are 102 for 2. Uh, we are almost coming to the halfway stage. 23.5 overs have gone by. So we can say 24 overs have gone by. 102 runs on the board. And uh, they didn't have a good start. In fact, uh, Dale Stain uh, uh, nipped up the wicket of the form man, Martin Guptill, pretty quickly. As he was caught by Van White, bowled screen for 10 of 18 balls with 1-4. Uh, and uh, the opening partner, Latham, is doing a fine job here. Uh, he's not out on 49 of 66 deliveries with 4 fours and 1-6. And uh, Kane Williamson came in. In fact, once uh, Martin Guptill was out, uh, when Martin Guptill was out, the score was 18. Uh, and Martin Guptill was out in the in the fifth over, but the score has uh, really moved on from then on with uh, Kane Williamson in the company of Latham uh, raising the score to 102. In fact, uh, adding uh, 84 good runs there, uh, but uh, Williamson uh, Williamson's wicket has been claimed by the leggy uh, Imran Tahir as he bowled him for 39 of 59 and four fours. Uh, but right now, Tom Latham is not out on 49. And uh, I think it's going to be George Worker who is walking in to uh, join uh, uh, Mark, uh, Tom Latham at this stage. Looking at the bowling, Dale Steen has been uh, bowling beautifully. Uh, four overs, no maiden, uh, one for 18. Uh, Kabiso Ramada, I'm very happy to see that uh, he's the best of the bowlers. And uh, that's really good to see that Kabiso Ramada has bowled a real tight line uh, to keep this New Zealand innings on a tight leash here. His six overs, he has only conceded 21 runs. David Wies has uh, leaked 17 of his three. Kyle Abbott uh, has also gone for a bit of runs, I would say. A four overs, none for 17. Him and Tahi, 5.5 overs, no made one for 19. Has picked up the big wicket there of Kane Williamson, the New Zealand captain. But has in his bowl, one over, none, no made him, none for nine. So this match is really, really turning out to be interesting, as we all know. The equation right now uh, stands with uh, New Zealand requiring another 182 runs. Uh, there are eight wickets. Uh, are remaining, uh, and, but they have to score that in 26.1 overs. So I'm going to uh, go for some commentary here uh, and see what exactly uh, is happening. Let's uh, have a look at the uh, New Zealand innings. So right now, while I am actually uh, talking to you, uh, let's see what's the situation right now as I'm going to leave you on this cricket broadcast now. And uh, I do see, uh, well, we are in the 25th over, as worker has come in to join. So, uh, essentially, if you look at it, uh, it's uh, 181 runs required from the balance, uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 26 overs, uh, and the run rate uh, that they have to score at uh, is 6.96. So, it's absolutely doable, uh, but, uh, well, uh, it's really, really uh, going on nicely. But it said, this is the decider. This will decide uh, who are, whoever wins uh, takes the ODI series. Uh, well, uh, good luck to both the teams. Uh, I think... Uh, we are having a nice battle here at the King's Mead in Durban. So as I'm going to leave you uh, with this uh, little update, uh, as I said, and uh, as I said, 181 runs are still required. 
Well, dear fans of the Tavis, uh, there's nothing more to add on this uh, cricket happening show. I uh, hope you all uh, liked it and uh, uh, definitely I'll be seeing you all tomorrow on my next cricket happening show. Uh, till then, it's goodbye. Thank you.